Thank you very much. The United States is a country of immigrants, and we must never forget that. About 50 years after the founding of the United States, the wave of immigration of Irish and Germans changed the face of the country. But by the 1880s, another wave of immigration was making itself very much felt. Immigrants from East Central and Southern Europe coming over to the United States to be able to found a new life, a life of opportunity, a life in which they could care for their families, and a life based upon freedom, the freedom outlined by the principles of the United States of America. It's important for us to realize, and we don't often realize this well enough in our lives today, the struggles and difficulties of our Slovak people in Europe in the mid-19th century. Our Slovak people in Central Europe in the mid-19th century were a people who were tremendously oppressed. In the Austrian and Austro-Hungarian empires, the Slovaks strove, strove to be able to be recognized as a nationality, as a people with a culture of their own, a history of their own, a history whose past went deep into the past and strove to be able to understand the values of faith and politics that shaped Central Europe. By the mid-19th century, however, the political aspect of the Austro-Hungarian Empire had begun to destroy whatever moves the Slovaks would make to be able to outline their own culture. The Ausgleich of 1861, in which Hungary received its autonomy in the Austrian Empire, was particularly devastating as the Hungarian majority in the area of the empire sought a systematic persecution of all the minorities, Slovaks included, in the Hungarian part of the empire. The progress that had been made by Slovaks in the early part and the central part of the 19th century was almost entirely destroyed as movements in the Hungarian parliament sought to be able to destroy any remembrance of the Slovaks and to be able to majorize the Slovak nation and the Slovak people and the Slovak culture. Because of this, many Slovaks emigrated and came to the United States. This year of 2015 is extremely important for us to remember as far as American Slovak history is concerned. This year not only marks the anniversary of the death of Father Stephen Fordick and the 125th anniversary of the First Catholic Slovak Union, but it also recognizes and marks the centennial of the signing of the Cleveland Pact. This pact, signed in October of 1915, showed the importance of what American Slovaks and American Czechs could do to be able to show the importance of their culture, the Slavic culture in Central Europe, and the vision that American Slovaks had for the future of their country and their people. Remember that in 1915, the First World War had just started. There was no such thing as a movement to be able to understand that these empires would fall at the end of World War I. This was only realized later. But it's the vision of people such as Stephen Fordick and so many others coming to the United States in the 1880s, as Father Fordick did as a young seminarian at the age of 23 in 1882. The seminary in Prague where he was studying asked for a Slovak priest that would be able to be fluent both in Slovak and in Czech 
to be able to come to the United States and the Cleveland area to be able to minister to the people there. As these nationalities continued to grow in the Cleveland area, it was essential to be able to have clergy to meet their needs. And Father Fordick was one of them. As Bishop Gilmore ordained him to the priesthood on the 2nd of July, 1882, Father Fordick, mind you, only in his mid-30s, worked with 12 others to be able to found this society. Only eight years as a priest. Until his age of 59, which he died on the 18th of January, 1915, this man worked with so many others to be able to prove positive the work of immigrants in the United States and especially in the Cleveland area. He also founded the Slovak League of America, newspapers, pamphlets, books, other elements of national pride in the Slovak cause. With this possibility, and the possibility of so many others who had a vision similar to his, such as Father Joseph Morgash, Joseph Pankuk, Anna Horban, and many others, it was then possible to be able to dream of an independent Slovak state that would be able to forge ahead the culture in Central Europe. It was this vision that outlined the Cleveland Pact of 1915, signed at the Bohemian National Hall, which still exists, on Broadway Avenue in Cleveland, with the idea that Slovakia and the Czech people would work together in an autonomous state to be able to show for the first time in history a, freedom, a free people of Slovak heritage. Father Fordick had this vision. Father Fordick lived this vision. Not only the vision of being able to understand the freedom of the people of Slovakia and their right to exist, but also to meet their needs as a priest and as a compassionate person. To meet the needs of those less fortunate. To be able to understand the need for education, to be able to provide for the future and to be able to understand the needs of so many people and what they had in their lives. Karol Kuzmani, the first vice president of the Matica Slovenska in the 1860s, once wrote a famous poem. And you probably know the words, at least many of you, and you also know the music. And you know that I can sing, so I will sing to you this famous Slovak hymn. Kto za pravdu hori, svete obeti, kto za ludstva prava, život vo sveti, kto nad krivdo biednih, suzu vironi, tomu moja pjesen slavo vzazvoni. To nad krivdo biednih suzu vironi, tomu moja pjesen slavo vzazvoni. Who burns for the truth, a holy sacrifice? <laughs> Who burns for the truth? A holy sacrifice, who lives to promote the right for humanity, who cries tears for the injustice of the poor, to this person the glory of my song rings. This famous hymn, made very famous during the First Slovak Republic in the 1940s during the Second World War, I think gives a very important outline of who Father Fordick was, and is a challenge for each and every one of us to be able to promote the best for our people, to be able to understand the glory of our culture, to be able to celebrate it with pride, and to be able to understand that freedom has its responsibilities. My brothers and sisters, as we go forth from this evening, 
Let us go forth with pride in our Slovak heritage, with pride in what Father Fordick was able to accomplish and what we need to accomplish as Slovaks today. Thank you.